Welcome to Zero 017, the latest long anticipated version of Factorio which just released in a first experimental version. This means that we can already check out almost all of the new features, but there are still going to be some bugs. So please be careful playing this new version. You should also back up all your save games and check if all your mods are already updated to work with the new release before switching to Zero 017. If you're ready to try 017 out, then you can download the experimental version from the Factorial website, if you have an account. Updating the Steam version of the game is also very easy. You just have to right click on Factorio in your library, click Properties, select the tab Betas and in the drop down menu you can choose the 017 beta. Just remember to turn this off once the stable releases of 017 will come out in a few months. Let's start with the first thing, high res graphics. Many of the game's graphics are already updated to be high res, but now there are even more. All the belts now have a nice look which isn't completely flat anymore. Underground belts are nicely round and if you sideload onto an underground belt, then you will see how the graphic reacts to this dynamically. All the power poles are now beautiful too. Laser turrets look awesome and now shoot more realistic laser beams. The other turrets, walls and gates are also updated now. All the alien related graphics are also reworked and look even more dangerous now. That was nice and all, but undoubtedly the biggest change in Zero 017 is the new fresh look for the entire GUI. Which means all the windows are now reworked. Let's start with the train GUI. It looks completely new and its usability and features are greatly improved. All stations and weight conditions are now in a single list. The conditions now showed progress, so you can always see easily how long a train will still have to wait in the current station. The map view is now also greatly improved. For example, it is now showing the path the train will take to the next stop. Control clicking anywhere in the new map will allow you to add a temporary station, which is incredibly useful for bigger train networks. Another little change is that trains will now drive through a train stop without conditions instead of coming to a full stop. This would be useful to define waypoints for your trains. You can also quickly select another train from within the new map view. The new mods menu is now even more powerful thanks to quite a few new features. The entire thing is now reworked into only one screen which got separated into three tabs. The Manage tab shows you a nice list with all the installed mods and their installed version. Selecting a mod shows you some more information. You can also enable or disable mods directly in a list view. The Install tab shows all the mods that are available for download. Now you can finally filter mods by category. The existing sort feature as well as the search are still available. Selecting a mod even shows you a nice picture now. In the details you can also quickly jump to all the dependencies, which is quite nice. The last tab will show you all the available mod updates with a changelog, so you finally have an idea of what an update is changing. You can also run multiple versions of the same mod now, just in case you always needed that. The technology window also got updated to fit the new design aesthetic. There is also a sweet research queue now, which should help the more advanced players. It will be automatically turned on after you launch your first rocket. Generating new maps should also be a lot more fun now, thanks to some changes to the map generator dialog. The top part now shows the preset changer and the seed. Below that you get your four tabs for settings regarding resource generation, terrain, look and feel, enemy distribution and some advanced settings. In the lower part you can import or export the map exchange string. The right side now shows a preview of what you're setting up. In general you could say that all the options now have more granular control thanks to fancy sliders. The starting area should also be more predictable now, so you always have all the ores you need. The ore generation algorithm got reworked again and should finally be good. The water generation also got improved by basically going back to the 012 days, which just had better water generation. This means you should now get larger connected oceans instead of a swampy mess. The settings for the size and frequency of alien bases also make sense now. Did you ever want to play on an island in an endless ocean? 
you can now choose between normal and island generation. The island has the rough size of the starting area. If you play multiplayer with multiple forces and starting areas, then there will be multiple islands. All the game settings menus now look way nicer too. Just look at it. The quick bar is one of the essential things we use every day in Factorio. Now it's even more powerful. You can now place every item into the quick bar, but this will only create a link from now on. The icon of the item will always show how many items you still have left in your inventory. If you have none, then you can still use it, but it will only place ghosts down. This means that no items are stored in your quick bar anymore, everything will be stored in your main inventory, which is now larger to accommodate for this change. A nice effect of this is that you are now able to create up to 10 pages for different purposes. You can also display as many of those as you want now. There's also a new toolbar next to your quick bar. It's an easy way of accessing a lot of game tools. There are tools for blueprinting, copying, cutting and pasting. Also a toggle for your personal robots and exoskeletons and a few more. That was the most important stuff, but there's even more. Every single GUI in the game got updated to represent a new style. Some GUIs might still change throughout the maturing process of 017. One of the focuses of the new Factorio version is improving the new player experience. The first thing will actually apply in free play as well. It's error messages for visual feedback. Now you will always know why the thing you are trying to achieve isn't working. Hovering over inserters will also show you where they are taking stuff from and where they are putting it. In the reworked campaign you will find the new super cute Compilatron, which is helping new players understand the game. The map also expands now instead of throwing you into a new map every time you play through a part of the campaign. The map editor also received a massive overhaul. The entire logic behind it got redone so it isn't very different from the normal game anymore, which greatly improves the abilities to do stuff. It's now accessible from within a game, so you can finally load existing maps. You can also easily clone parts of your factory. Editing the terrain is also easier now thanks to the paintbrush tool, which allows you to override patches of the same terrain. Editing forces is also possible now. You can also control the time of the simulation now. You can go fast, slow, pause, or even advance by single ticks. There are many new tools to make construction robots even more powerful. First up, there is the Upgrade Planner, which helps to upgrade parts of a factory. For example, it allows you to update belts or assembly machines to a higher tier. It can also upgrade modules. You can also copy and paste now, so we finally can stop using temporary blueprints. If you messed up bad, you can just hit Ctrl and Z to redo almost everything. Cliffs are now a lot less annoying, because bots finally learned how to drop some cliff explosives on those bastards. All the text in a game now is able to get formatted. This includes save games, train stations, chat messages and more. You can color or stylize everything. Adding icons of items is also possible. Chat messages can now also reference blueprints, recipes and armor. You can also ping a region on the map, so everyone can see what you just drew on the map. Now onto something technical. The render backend is now better, faster and shinier. It now uses some fresher APIs like OpenGL 3.2 and DirectX 11. It's also faster now. Thanks to some magical tricks it uses less VRAM now, so the game should be a lot easier to play on low-end GPUs and integrated graphics. The CPU side of the rendering process also got improved, so your CPU has more time to calculate your spaghetti mess of belts. The optimizations also extend to the fluid mechanics. Now the fluid calculations are up to a few times faster on high-end CPUs. A part of this is that every fluid network can now be processed on its own, which allows for some sweet multi-threading. Remember the old times when you connected two fluid systems together and everything mixed up and broke and you cried? That's only a distant, past memory from now on. Underground pipes now affect throughput based on length. The system for calculating flow rate got changed. Now every fluid has mass and friction, which somehow relates to flow rate. 
mass and friction can also be different for each fluid. The last major thing that the devs want to do before the 1.0 release is polishing. One part of this are lots of science changes in Series 17. The attack tree, for example, got changed in a lot of ways. The rocket silo and thus the win can be achieved without any military science packs now. Some things make more sense now, like the fact that the artillery cannon needs the cannon shell research as a prerequisite. Science packs are also all unlocked by their own research now. All the materials required for building the rocket in the silo are now unlocked earlier on and are more useful in mid-game. High-tech and production science packs are now more separated in what they unlock. But they also read it the naming for some of the science packs for more consistency. Science pack 1 is now called automation science pack, 2 change to logistic and 3 to chemical. High-tech science packs are now called utility science pack. These big changes are also reflected in most of the recipes. Military science packs are now a lot cheaper, because you only need two walls instead of the gun turret. This gives also more incentive to automate brick smelting earlier on. Chemical science packs have always been quite the bump in complexity, which made this a hard step for many beginners. One problem always was that you needed petroleum gas for advanced circuits, but what should you now do with heavy and light oil? Well, now you can use some of it for solid fuel, because chemical science packs now require one solid fuel instead of the electric miner. You also get two packs per crafting cycle, but the crafting time doubled to reflect that. They also need three advanced circuits and two engine parts now. The production science pack still needs one electric furnace, but they require one level 1 productivity module as well as 30 rails from now on. You will now receive three packs per crafting cycle instead of only two. You also get three packs per cycle now from the utility science pack. Their recipe got changed further, so now it takes one flying robot frame, three low density structures, and two instead of three processing units. To summarize these changes, you could say that stone and coal are getting used more, while the total consumption of ore is sinking by about 10%, while you need about 10% more oil. Speed running should also get easier, because military science can be completely skipped. That was it for the major changes, but there are still plenty minor things to talk about. The internal way of handling different keyboard layouts changed. So new players with non-QWERTY keyboard layouts won't have to reconfigure lots of keys before being able to play. The speed of bells got increased by about 12.5% to round numbers. Normal bells now have a maximum throughput of 15 items per second. Fast bells now transport up to 30 items per second. And express bells are pushing items through your factories at up to 45 items per second. You can now craft every recipe in every assembly machine as the item limit from the lower tier machines got removed. You can now win the game by launching a rocket without a satellite. Nice for beginners and speedrunners. Your dumb personal robots are now less dumb and won't leave their roboports if you are moving faster than they can move. Filter inserters can now whitelist or blacklist items. All the vanilla armor is now indestructible, but mods can still use health for their custom armor. Pickaxes are now gone. You can mine at stone pick speeds all the time and once you research steel, your mining speed gets upgraded to the speed of a steel pickaxe. Tooltips that appear when hovering over something now make more sense because some weird mechanics got removed. This includes burner efficiency and the mess that mining speed was. All values of things got adjusted accordingly. Fast replacing pipes with underground pipes is now finally possible. Sometimes you just make a mess by spelling your items everywhere. Well, now they won't spill on belts anymore. There is a belt immunity equipment now, so you don't get pushed around by your spaghetti belts anymore. Trains are included in blueprints now. Nice. Worms and spitters are now less magical. Their spitballs now predict your movement instead of being guided missiles. So you can run around them now to avoid getting hit. And last but not least, there is now a separate construction queue for tile and entity ghosts. This means that construction robots can handle your requests faster while they are laying copious amounts of concrete. 
that was already everything I could manage to squeeze into here. There are a lot more little changes and tweaks which you will be able to find in this video's description. If you have questions, then feel free to ask them in the comments down below. If you learned something new, please leave a like and also subscribe, so you don't miss out on any new videos and tutorials. Feedback is also always appreciated. Have a great time, see you all next time.